In this video, you'll learn how to reliably align custom bone shapes in Blender in the shortest time possible. I also have a two longer and more beginner-friendly videos on the same subject. If you're a beginner, I'd recommend watching them first. This video is suitable for advanced users or as a summary of the longer tutorials. Theory To set up your bone shapes with precision, you have to understand a little bit of 3D theory. You have to know what world and local space coordinates are. This viewport gizmo here shows the world coordinates and you can see the local orientation of each object by enabling axis under object properties. You can also visualize the axis of each individual bone by going to armature tab and again on the viewport display enabling axis. These shapes that you see next to the character will become the widgets or the custom bone shapes. In Blender, we generally use meshes as custom bone shapes. Often these meshes will only consist of edges so that they don't obstruct your character. Bone shapes are assigned by selecting a bone in pose mode, then navigating to the bone tab, viewport display, and selecting an object in the custom object menu. Here I'm going to undo this operation. When you set an object as a custom shape, the object is aligned to the bone as follows. The pivot point of the object goes to the head of the bone. The orientation of the object is aligned with the orientation of the bone. This is actually all you need to know. In the rest of this video, I'm just going to show you common problems and possible solutions for them. World space to world space. This is probably the simplest case. When a bone and an object are both aligned with the world, then setting the object as a custom shape will feel very natural. Just select it from the menu and it will have the same orientation as it does in the scene. So in this scene, my root bone for the whole character is aligned with the world and this shape that I want to use as a root shape is also aligned with the world. So I'm just going to use the picker pick it and it will be aligned perfectly. Spherical widgets. Spheres look the same from all angles. So when a sphere widget makes sense, you won't have much to do aside from setting that shape. So here I'm going to use a spherical widget for these pole targets. I can also go to edit mode, create a new bone, give it a random orientation, copy it, and then I'm going to give these random bones the sphere widget. And obviously it kind of looks okay from any angle. Aligning a shape with the bone's y-axis. This situation is also not difficult, but it can feel a little bit unintuitive and confusing at first. In Blender, the local axis that runs along the length of a bone is always the y-axis. Same thing in the fingers or anywhere you look. Here's the y-axis and it always points in the direction of the bone. So what you need to do is make sure that what you consider to be the length of your shape is also aligned with the y-axis. So for example, for the fingers, I'm going to want to use this shape here. The way I like to work is to build my shapes so that their length is aligned with the up-axis of the 3D world, which is the z-axis. To correct this, I can select my shape, activate Affect Only Origins under Tool, and rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis, and that will align the y-axis with the length of my shape. Now I can select my rig and I can select this shape as the shape for the finger. And the shape will run along the length of this bone. If I select all of these finger bones, shift select the one that already has the shape applied, I can go to the custom object field, right click and choose copy to select it. Same thing for the scale value and that will apply the same shape for the, the rest of the bones. Y axis alignment with exact length. As a slight variation of the last techniques, Sometimes you want the shape to not only run along the length of the bone, but also to be exactly the same length as the bone. For example, I may want 
the same shape for the upper arm, lower arm, upper leg and lower leg, even though they have slightly different lengths. You can make this happen if you follow these steps. This is the object that I'm going to be using. So on the object side, you want to set the pivot of this uh, object to be right at the base of this shape. You want the y-axis to be aligned with the length of the shape. This is something that we already did, so I can turn effect on the origins, rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis, and that's it. Under item, transform, make sure that scale is applied, so it's 1, 1, 1. And finally, make sure that the dimension in the white direction is exactly one unit. On the bone side, under custom shape, make sure that scale is set to exactly one and the scale to bone length option is on. Now I can simply select this shape for all of the bones that I want to apply it to. Use the copy to select a trick and it will be applied. And as you can see, it is exactly the length that I need for each bone. Again, let's go to edit mode, create a new bone, make it really long and make another copy, make it really small. And if I choose this widget as a custom shape for both of these bones, the length of the shape will be aligned with the shape of these bones. Visual alignment. Often you want a custom shape to appear in an exact position in space. So for example, I may want the shape of the head to look exactly like that. Maybe I'll even rotate it a little bit just to make it a little bit weird. So here's my workflow. First, I visually align the shape where I want it to appear. So there we go. Then I'm going to apply the scale if necessary. Then I'm going to turn on effect on the origins, switch to vertex snapping and snap this pivot point to the tail of the, of the bone. You can hide your mesh if it gets in the way. Now you may want to scale the object axis to match this, the size of your bone axis. Then just use rotation to align this object axis with the bone axis as best as you can. Once I'm done, I'm going to press Alt S to return uh, the object axis to its, to its proper size and then move and snap the pivot point to the head of the bone. Then I can just select my armature, go to pose mode and pick my custom shape. I also have to uncheck scale to bone length and you'll have a perfect match. In this case, it is almost a perfect match. So I could go back to the object, affect its origin and rotate a bit until it matches perfectly. As you can see, this approach is a little bit tedious and you may have to spend a lot of time to get perfect precision. Luckily, there is an add-on that does all of this work for us. In the description of this video, I'm going to give you a link to this add-on that you can easily download. Then you have to install and activate it as any other add-on. I show how to do that in my longer tutorials. Once you have the add-on installed, all you need to do is visually align your shapes where you want them to be. Then with this shape selected, shift select the rig, go to pose mode, select the bone that you want to apply this shape to, right click and choose set and align bone shape. And this will give you absolutely perfect alignment with just one click. Here it is one more time. Shift select the armature, go to pose mode, select the bone, right click, set and align and the shape will be aligned perfectly. Finally, I want to cover one of the most advanced options when it comes to aligning bone shapes. This character has a tail and it has a relatively common setup for automatically curving the tail by just uh, rotating the first bone in the chain. So I want to set up a custom shape for this bone, but I want it to be displayed here at the end of the tail. So I'm going to go to object mode. I'll visually align this shape that I want to use here with the first bone of the chain. Then again, I'm going to use the add-on 
to set that as a custom shape. And then on the bone tab, I'm going to locate the override transform field. And I want to choose this bone here. And I know that its name is tail005. I'm going to select it and the shape is going to jump at the end of the tail. And that will give me a very intuitive way to control this tail. And that's everything that I wanted to show you when it comes to aligning the bone shapes. Earlier I said that we generally use meshes as bone shapes, but actually there are two additional options. You can use empties, for example. So I'm going to choose the cone one. And I'm going to try to apply it as a shape for this spine bone. And as you can see, it is going to work. You can also use a curve object, but not directly. If I try to apply this curve object now, you'll see that my bone simply disappeared. But if I apply some sort of a modifier to this curve shape, for example, the triangulate, then the shape will be displayed here. And then I can edit it. And these edits will be visible in the shape here. Another option is to get rid of the triangulate uh, modifier, go to the spline options, geometry, and give this curve a bevel. And that will also display it in the viewport. However, you'll see that your shape has a little bit of a thickness, so that's something that you may not want. That's it. I hope you liked this video enough to give it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe to this channel. I'm going to post more videos like this. And my next project is going to be exporting rigged characters from Blender to game engines like Unreal, Unity, Godot, and so on. If you're interested in that, uh, turn on notifications when you subscribe, and you'll know when I release the next video.